We're at the River Bottom Farm today. This is the farm that I, I've hunted this farm quite a bit over the last few years. The goal today, we want to get these cameras out. I'm trying to find locations for putting vine scrapes. I'm going to walk through of how I find those locations, how I kind of determine what locations are a little bit better than others. You can't just go out and throw a vine scrape in the middle of the woods and expect deer to start hitting it right away. There's stuff that you can do. There's locations that you can put them at where they're going to hit them the first night you put it out they're going to continue to keep freshening those up. So let's get this batteries pulled out, refreshing them. This one's got a battery pack on it. These new battery packs, these don't mess around. Whole season, you're good to go. But if you are going to run cuttybacks, I highly advise you skip out on the battery packs, do the solar panels instead if they're available, because the solar panels, I kid you not, I've got like cameras that have been running for two years on the 4D batteries and a solar panel that I got hooked up to it. So those solar panels, they're worth the investment. After two years, you've already made your money back. You don't have to buy as many batteries. So. All right, boys, on to the next one. Well, let's dive into the meat and potatoes. So how are you gonna choose your location for these vine scrapes? I'm at, I'm familiar with this farm. I know how these deer work this farm, but if I'm coming in here, say I've never stepped foot on this farm before, I'm looking for a spot to hang a camera. It's, you know, the beginning of May. There's not a lot of sign out there. Sure, you can see trails through the grass and whatnot, but how do you find that spot? The spot of spots to put a vine scrape. Now. I'm mostly looking for natural pinches. If I have a field of beans, we got a field of 15 inch rope beans here. Eventually these deer are gonna be out here like crazy gnawing on these beans. If you remember, I've said in multiple episodes, this is the first ag field that these deer have from the river bottom. So this is their destination food source all year long. But in choosing these spots, you know, my stand is just right over here. I've, I've hunted this plot a lot. This is the same field where we're standing that I killed tripod. And a lot of these deer like to come out from the south fence line and they mostly gravitate out of this corner here. I've got a nice overhanging limb. It's perfect height to hang a vine scrape over and it's gonna be right in front of their faces. You see this trail comes out right in this corner. This limb's right over this corner. I want this vine to be right in their face. So when they come out, they can't, they, they notice it right away. It can't be not seen. But as for locations, my number one spot's always gonna be a natural pinch fence gap coming into a field, multiple trails um, crossing, crisscrossing together, just like that first camera we were at, or a good field edge. And I'm putting them on the edges of bean fields instead of corn fields. It seems like I just don't get as many pictures on these vine scrapes in the corn fields in the summer months as I do beans. You know, these deer like, after they get up to your knees, these deer like bedding out here all day. And it just seems like they hit the beans a lot harder in the summer months than corn. But. We're gonna walk through the process of how to do this. I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but for the people that don't know how to do a vine scrape and how I do them, I don't like using rope, I keep it natural. So we'll try and find a vine real quick, put the scrape up, hang a cutty back, and on to the next one. So we're looking for a grapevine. And um, if you guys don't know what those look like, we'll show you real quick. There's two, really two kind of vines that grow um, in Iowa. We've got one here. This is the vine that you don't want to mess with. Let's go look at this real quick. I've seen a lot of guys hanging these. I think it's poison oak or poison ivy. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done my research. But this vine here, this is what you don't want to use. You'll be scratching your arms and everywhere for days. This is not the right pattern. The grape vines are more mm, stringy, so to say, flaky. These don't have those flakes, those lines, those ridges like a grapevine does. So stay away from these. These are not what you want to use. They will hit them, but I wouldn't use them. This is what we're looking for right here. Now, grapevines are normally really messy. This is what I meant by that flaky bark, rectangle shaped. 
about a half inch diameter is what we're looking for. Right, about right here. An inch is fine too. Um, gosh, it's really loopy. Ideally, I like straight, as straight as I can be. This one will work. I'm gonna cut it down here. We'll use that straight end up top. We'll get this pulled off and we'll get it hung. Show you guys what we're about. One side. And when I'm cutting, I'm always making sure I'm getting more than I need. Just because you never know what height you're gonna need. Let's go get this up. I always attach mine to the main, thicker part, so to say, of your branch because these deer work the heck out of these vine scrapes they play with them a lot got a lot of trail cam video watching them work them actually on this farm there's a couple deer we're going to talk about here in a little bit that made it through i know the tight 10 i got a lot of video of him working these vine scrapes it's almost like it's a game to him it's kind of funny so I always use two zip ties. Make sure they're tight. Okay. Cut this branch. All right, we got our vine scrape up. Next, normally what I would do, see how this, see how this vine's dripping water? That's ideal, that's what you wanna see. That's a fresh vine, it's alive. Just seems like the ones that hold water are the ones you want to use. Maybe I'm being too particular, but I have better luck with the ones that are still alive. So normally, after I get my vine hung, my scrape's finished, normally I would work this dirt under with a rake. The only reason I'm not today is because we don't really need that visual effect right now. There's already bare dirt here. Right as they come out of this field, they're going to see this vine hanging here. That's the visual attractant. Now, if I'm in a timber setting and there's a bunch of green thatch all around, I'm gonna work that soil so that's somewhat of a visual, somewhat of an attractant. Those deer are gonna come over, check that out. They can smell that fresh, fresh work dirt. Let's go over the locations one last time. We're looking for natural pinches. What I mean by that are field edges, corners like this one, we got a fence gap right here. Fence gaps are awesome spots for these. Um, another good spot is just where two trails come together where they cross. I'll put it right on the X, right in front of their face so they, they can't miss it as they walk by it. They're going to work it, even if it's right in their face on the trail. Normally I'm using these vine scrapes on bean edges instead of corn edges this time of year just because it seems like they get after the beans a little harder than they do it on the corn um, as far as feeding this time of year. You know, these beans just popped up, these deer are eating these cotyledons. They're the sweetest part of this bean plant um, right now. So. So just like Gavin talked about on this past week's episode, you know, we're making a plan for success as soon as season's over. January 11th is when our off season starts. That's when we go full deer mode. You know, I was running cameras in late season on this farm in particular, and I had three really good deer make it through that I knew of. Really recommend running those cameras all the way through shed season. That way you can know exactly what deer made it through. That way you can make that plan. But these three deer, there's two non-typicals on the east side of this farm. One made a really cool jump this past year. You know, he's probably 130 inch back in 2021, 2022. I don't know, he could have been in the 70, possibly 80s range. Um, had another non-typical over there uh, that made it through. Not really sure on their ages, um, but they look like they could both be really good deer for next year. The one I'm probably most excited about, just because I have so much history with them, is the beast. Casey and I had a lot of opportunities at that deer last year. It never came into tuition, but I think this next year will be in the chips for them. Might be a deer that's on the top of my hit list. So those are three deer that I'm already aware of that made it through on this property. I'm already making changes to the property for these deer specifically, and I'm already in the game for them. So we got these cameras hung today. We got a few more to put out. We got to do a couple other farms today. Might even go help Steve uh, start planting corn for that guards buck over on his property. So thank you guys for joining us today. More of the story, get your cameras out early, get that intel, and you're gonna be better off come October, November. 
We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.